Hello everyone, in this lecture I am going to introduce a new way of solving linear systems that is called iterative methods. So, in the past couple of lectures I have introduced the direct methods those includes Gaussian elimination, Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting and then LU decomposition. Today, attractive methods are quite beneficial in terms of numerical computation when you are going to solve linear system of equations. In direct method for example, in Gaussian elimination we need to do order of n cube operations for solving a n by n linear system. So, it will be something order of n cube. However, the method which I am going to introduce today Jacobi and Gauss Seidel, we need to do only order of n square operations in each iteration. So, if number of iterations are less that is less than n, then these methods are quite beneficial when compared to the direct method. So, however, these techniques can only be applied to square linear system. Square linear systems means you are having a number of equations together with a number of unknown variables. So, basically iterative methods for A x equals to B begin with an op approximation to the solution x naught that we use to say initial solution, then we seek to provide a series of improved approximations x 1, x 2, etcetera that converts to the exact solution. In engineering problems, this approach is appealing because it can be stopped as soon as the approximation x i have converged to an acceptable precision, means whenever the difference between the exact solution and the solution in any iteration is less than a given threshold. The iterative methods are good to use for the problems where the matrix A is large and sparse. Okay? And in these cases, if the matrix A is large and sparse, they are much faster than the direct methods. So, let me introduce these methods in a general setting. So, if we are having a system A x equals to B, where A is the coefficient matrix, x is the vector of unknown variables and B is the right hand side vector, then an iterative method for solving this linear system can be written as in this form, where P is called the iteration matrix, Q is a column vector and for any x obtained in kth iteration, we can get the update on x in k plus 1 iteration as x k plus 1. Now, how to write this P and Q that is the difference in various methods those coming under the category of iterative methods. As I told you we start with an initial solution x naught. So, P x naught plus Q will give us x 1 then in the second iteration x 2 will be P x 1 plus Q and so on. So, in each iteration we update our solution and we with an assumption that solution is going to converge to the exact solution. However, it is not true always, solution may diverge also for a given iterative scheme. Now, how to write this particular matrix P that is the iteration matrix and the column vector q. So, as we know we can always write a given n by n matrix A as the sum of 
थ्री मैट्रिस एल प्लस डी प्लस यू इंटू एक्स इक्वल्स टू बी वेयर एल इज ए लोअर ट्राइंगुलर मैट्रिक्स डी इज ए डाइगोनल मैट्रिक्स एंड यू इज एन अपर ट्राइंगुलर मैट्रिक्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर हैविंग ए थ्री बाई थ्री सिस्टम गिवन बाय द कॉफिशियंट मैट्रिक्स ए एज दिस वन then i can write this coefficient matrix a equals to a lower diagonal matrix plus a lower uh, a diagonal matrix plus an upper triangular matrix which is given as a11 a12 a13 0 here a11 will not come as i have taken a11 already in diagonal matrix in that is capital d so this is the matrix capital l this is the matrix capital d and this is the matrix capital u now we are having different scheme under the category of iterative methods first of all i want to drive or i want to introduce the most simple scheme that is called jacobi method in jacobi method what we used to do we used to write this system as dx equals to minus l plus u x plus b so what we have done we have taken these two terms into right hand side now what i will do my iterative scheme will work like this that at k plus 1 iteration x is given as from the estimate of x in k iteration or i can write x k plus 1 equals to just multiplying both side pre multiplying by d inverse so it will become minus d inverse l plus u x k plus d inverse into b here if i compare this particular scheme with the general formula of iterative scheme that is given by x k plus 1 equals to p times x k plus q so the iteration matrix p is given by this particular matrix the right hand side uh, the column vector q is given by this term it will be a 3 uh, n by n matrix and this will be a n by 1 column vector so this particular scheme is called 
Jacobi iterative scheme. Here we will start with an initial solution x naught, then I will find x 1 using this formula and so on. In a more simple setting, if I want to write the iterative equations for this particular scheme, I need to consider a system of three equations with three unknown. Let us say the coefficient matrix A is given by this one and vector x is x 1, x 2, x 3. and right hand side vector b is b 1, b 2, b 3. Okay. So, now this is the linear system a x equals to b. The first equation can be written like x 1 k plus 1 equals to 1 upon a 1 1 into b 1 minus a 1 2 x 2 at k iteration minus a 1 3 x 3 at k iteration. So, what I have done? I have taken the variable which is corresponding to diagonal element of the coefficient matrix in the left hand side and I have taken the rest of the two terms of the coefficient matrix in the right hand side. Similarly, from the second equation we can get the iterative equation for the variable x 2 and it is given as 1 upon a 2 2 b 2 minus a 2 1 x 1 k minus a 2 3 x 3 k. Finally, from the third equation I can write the iterative scheme for x 3. So, x 3 k plus 1 equals to 1 upon a 3 3 b 3 minus a 3 1 x 1 k minus a 3 2 x 2 k. So, these three iterative equations can be updated simultaneously to get the iterative values of x in each iteration. Now, I will take an example and I will solve it using the Jacobi iterative scheme. So, here let us take this system of equations here I am having three equations with three unknowns x 1, x 2, x 3. The iterative equations can be written in this way x 1 k plus 1 will be 1 upon 4 at minus 2 x 2 k minus 3 x 3 k x 2 k plus 1 equals to minus 1 upon 5 into minus 14 minus 3 x 1 k minus 2 x 3 k and similarly from the third equation I can write the iterative equation for x 3 that is x 3 k plus 1 equals to 1 upon 8 into 27 plus 2 x 1 k minus 3 x 2 k. Now, if I start with an initial solution let us say x 1 0 is 0, x 2 0 is 0, x 3 0 is 0, then the in the iteration 1 I will get the value of x 1 1 is 2 that is coming from the first equation. 
here I am putting x 2 0 is 0, x 3 0 is 0. So, x 1 1 will become 8 upon 4, so it is coming out as 2. Similarly, from the second equation I am getting x 2 1 that is coming out to be 2.8 and x 3 1 equals to 3.375. Now, if I put these values in the right hand side of these three iterative equations, I can get the next iterate of x and that will be for x 1 it will be minus 1.931 for x 2 it will be 5.350 and for x 3 it will be 2.825. If we need a solution correct up to 3 places after decimal then we need to calculate this sequence of values for further k. So, using the same this table gives me the values of x 1, x 2, x 3 in third iteration, then in fourth iteration and you can see the values are changing quite differently in each iteration. Going in the same manner in 20 second iteration it is coming out minus 1.025, for x 2 it is 2.976, for x 3 it is 1.973 and then in the next iteration the values can be seen like this. After 43rd equation that is in 44th iteration I am getting the value x 1 as minus 1.001, x 2 as 3 and x 3 as 2. In 45th iteration I am getting minus 1, 3 and 2. Then in 46th iteration I am getting minus 1, 3, 2. So, in two successive iterations I am getting the same value, hence my solution converts to minus 1, 3 and 2 and which is the exact solution also of the given linear system. So, here we have taken 46 iteration to solve this 3 by 3 system using the Jacobi method and this is the uh, this is the, this example gives an illustration of the Jacobi method. Now, as I told you we have taken 46 iterations to solve a 3 by 3 system just by starting with an initial solution 0 0 0. Hence, I can comment on the convergence of Jacobi method and I can say it is having a slow convergence. So, in the next method that is called gauss seidel method, I will introduce some modification in the gauss jacobi scheme and then gauss seidel method iterative equations will give a bit faster convergence compared to the jacobi scheme. If we see the iterative equation of this Jacobi method, here you can see in the second equation I am using the value of x 1 from the previous iteration. However, before going to the second equation I have find out the value of x 1 at in the current iteration. So, here the value of x 1 from the current iteration is available to me, but I am using the old value. Similarly, if you see the third equation here for both the values of x 1 and x 2 are available to us from the current iteration that is at the k plus 1 iteration from the first two equations, but what we are doing? we are still using the values which we obtained in the previous iteration. If I modify these values from the values of current iteration, then I can have a bit more faster convergence. For example, like in the first equation I will calculate x 1 at k plus 1 iteration and what I will do here I will use this value. 
from the first and second equations I will get the value of x1 and x2 respectively in k plus 1 iteration and in the third equation I will use these new values. So, basically in a general setting what I am doing? I am having a system x equals to b, again I am writing it l plus d plus u x equals to b and then what I am doing? I am writing this d plus l x equals to minus u x plus b and from here I am writing my iterative scheme that is d plus l at k plus 1 iteration equals to minus u x k plus b. So, this equation can be written in a more appropriate form like this just I am pre multiplying by the inverse of this matrix. So, it will become minus d plus l inverse u x k plus d plus l inverse b. So, this particular equation gives the gauss seidel scheme in a general setting where my coefficient matrix A is n by n matrix. Here iteration matrix P can be written as minus d plus L inverse into u and the column vector q is given as d plus l inverse into b. If I compare this scheme with the f -tet equation of an iterative scheme. So, this scheme is called gauss seidel method for solving the linear system of equations and if I use this method on a 3 by 3 general system a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 plus a 1 3 x 3 equals to b 1 and other two equations like we have taken in Jacobi method the final system comes out to this particular three iterative equations. The only change is as I told you earlier also here we are using the updated value of x 1 and x 2 in second and third iterative equations respectively for finding the values in the current iteration that is k plus 1 iteration. Hence, we hope that this scheme will be more faster because we are using the more updated values of the variables in the scheme. Let us take an example of this method. So, the same example which we have taken in the earlier case that is in case of Jacobi method there we use or we need to use 46 iterations for finding the exact solution means for the convergence of the solution. Here let us see how many iterations we need using the gauss seidel method. So, for that particular example the three iterative equations that is for x 1, x 2 and x 3 can be written in this way. So, here you can note down this particular term and these two terms here we are using the updated values 
as I have told you in the derivation of this particular matter. Then if I start with an initial solution that is x 1 0 equals to x 2 0 equals to x 3 0 equals to 0. So, initially I am taking a 0 vector as the initial solution then in the first iteration I am getting the value. So, here I need to put x 2 equals to 0 and x 3 equals to 0. So, what will happen once I will put the 0 0 I will get x 1 1 edge 8 upon 4 that will be 2. Now, in the second equation I will not use here x 1 equals to 0 because if I will use here x 1 equals to 0 that will be something uh, that will be exactly like Jacobi. Here I am using the subdated value of x 1 that will uh, that is 2. So, this will become x 2 1 equals to minus 1 upon 5 minus 14 minus 3 into 2 that is minus 6 minus 2 into 0. So, here x 2 1 will become minus 20 upon minus 5 that is 4 and so x 2 will be x 2 1 will become 4 and finally, x 3 1 will become 1 upon 8 27 plus 2 into 2. Please note that here again I am using the updated value of x 1 in Jacobi method I have used here 0 that is the value from the previous iteration. So, 2 into 2 4 minus 3 into 4 12. So, 27 plus 4 minus 12. So, it will be 27 minus 8, so 19 by 8 and that will be coming out something like 2.375. Now, in the next iteration I will get the value x 2 in the second iteration x 1 is minus 1.781, x 2 equals to 2.681 and x 3 equals to 1.924. Then these are the values in the third iteration. Then we are having value in fourth iteration and so on. Continuing this calculation in ninth iteration I am getting the value x 1 is minus 1, x 2 is 3, x 3 is 2. In the tenth, uh, tenth iteration I am getting x 1 is minus 1, x 2 is 3 and x 3 is 2. So, hence my iterative scheme converge in ten iteration itself while in case of Jacobi method it was taking 45 iterations, but here in Gauss-Seidel method it converges in 10 iterations. Hence the claim which we made that by using these two updates Gauss-Seidel method will be something more faster than the Jacobi method is verified by this example. Now, in this particular lecture, we discuss the two iterative schemes for solving linear system of equations and we have seen that the latter one is quite faster than the earlier one. Hence, an iterative scheme is good if it is more faster. So, the effort should be made in the for developing any iterative scheme by taking care of its convergence or rate of convergence, how fast it converts to the exact solution. In the next lecture, I will talk about it and then I will introduce one more technique to you that is basically called successive over relaxation. In this particular technique, I will use a relaxation parameter, I will find out the optimal value of that relaxation parameter and then based on that optimal value in terms of convergence speed. Once I will get the optimal value, I will get my iterative system 
and using that particular iterative system, I will write the iterative equations. Further, in the next lecture, I will also introduce about the conditions for convergence of an iterative scheme. So, thank you very much for this lecture.